So this segment is about reducing barriers to entry. And uh, similar to open source communities, uh, receiving contributions is super important for inner source communities as well. And in this segment, we'll explore what trusted committers can do to foster contributions. So soliciting contributions is actually a little bit harder in inner source than it is in open source. And there are a few reasons why this is true. For the first place, there are just fewer contributors. And that's because you're constrained by the size of a company or or the size of you know, an individual work group as opposed to the whole world. Um, secondly, the contributors are gonna wanna work during their work hours. And this is different than open source where people tend to work on weekends and evenings on pet projects. And then thirdly, especially at the beginning of an inner source practice in a company, the goals that a given employee is set up for their focal review may not be reflected in inner source. So you have to, for this reason, make onboarding super easy, seamless and frictionless for your contributors when you do manage to, uh, to attract some uh, so that they aren't off put at the beginning. And as a trusted committer, there are a number of things you can do uh, in order to foster contributions. So for example, have a good readme.md in each code repository. A good readme.md explains what is in the repository, obviously, and what it can be used for but it should also provide detailed instructions on how to get, how to build, how to test, and how to use the software in the repository. Have a good contributing MD file, which outlines what's expected of the contributor with respect to making a contribution. It should answer common questions, such as, how do I submit a bug report or a feature request? Who do I contact in case of questions, and how can I reach them? What are the conventions for code style branching and commit messages. What is the definition of done for a contribution in this community? What are the process steps that, that govern contribution? What's expected of me, the contributor, in terms of supporting contributed code after a contribution is accepted? And what is the code of conduct and what are the guidelines for how this community works? If you happen to have an internal license attached to the software, which in, in some companies is a precondition so that you can distribute it across legal entities, include a copy of that license and in addition to that, include an explanation of the rights and the obligations put forth in that license and do that in layman's terms so people know what they can actually do with the software. And in addition to these documentary tasks and similar to open source software development, it should be super easy and straightforward to run and to test the software locally by potential contributors so that they can start implementing and validating their contribution with as little effort as possible. So related to contribution, there are two common models today for making contributions for the mechanics, so to speak. The one is called fork and join and the other one is called shared repository. And both have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, but as a trusted committer, you want to make sure to accommodate the needs of your contributors and support both models in your community. Oftentimes, potential contributors will have a question that they need an answer to before they can make a contribution. That might be a technical question, but it could just as easily be a housekeeping question like, who do I ask a question of? Or how do I contact the trusted committer? So for this reason, it's important that there always be somebody on call to answer these simple questions in the contributor channel. And it is the trusted committer's responsibility to make sure that there are people around to do that. Now, in many communities, the trusted committer takes that responsibility on themselves. But as the community grows, it's a great idea to distribute this task to people who are up and coming, have a little bit of experience and know the answers to those simple questions. Um, this is a principle that works really well in open source as well. Just participation is ownership. So the more you can give people responsibility as they show an appetite for it, the more you make your project sticky for them and they'll stick around. So wrapping up, for an inner source community working in, an, in a corporate context, it is super important to keep the barriers for entry as low as possible to get as many contributions as possible. And that means you have to give people access to documentation, both the contributors and the users. And you have to make sure that they can get up and running in no time with making contributions. And generally speaking, I would say the goal of any trusted committer should be to create a great onboarding experience in their community.